if you're familiar with random number generation, the, the biggest problem with random numbers is you never know if a random number is random, right? So if you ask me, generate five number na random numbers, and I said six, 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 six. Great. <laughs> now, that's a perfectly random sequence. Out of the billion numbers I was going to generate, it just so happened that the first five I mentioned were the number six. You have no way of proving otherwise, right? Uh, random number generator is only as good as, as you can keep trying it and testing it. So anyway, Android had a horrific mistake whereby it would give you the first random number with 256 bits of entropy and it would give you the second one with 8 bits of entropy. And that means it's pretty much the, first, the same as the first number. And because a transaction signature in Bitcoin is a secret exponent times a random number, if you had two signatures in a sequence with the same random number, you can figure out the secret exponents. Uh, that's bad. Español, English, Deutsch. Normalmente produzco solo videos en inglés y español. Normally I produce only videos in English and Spanish. Normalerweise produciré ich nur videos en English and Spanish. Pero hoy voy a hacer otra excepción y traducirlo también en alemán. But today I make another exception and translate it into German too. Aber heute werde ich noch mal eine Ausnahme machen und es auch in Deutsch übersetzen. Ja, algunas semanas tengo escrito en mi lista de tareas por hacer de traducir el video hashtag BTC4. Now, already some weeks ago, I have written on my to-do list to translate the video BTC4, hashtag BTC4. Schon seit ein paar Wochen habe ich äh, auf meiner To-Do-Liste geschrieben, ähm, den Video BTC4 in Deutsch zu übersetzen. Estoy segura que esta idea puede ayudar a mucha gente económicamente. I am sure that this can help many people economically. Ich bin sicher, dass diese Idee vielen Leuten uh, finanziell helfen kann. Y da motivación para aprender Bitcoin and give motivation to learn about Bitcoin. Und Motivation geben, um über Bitcoin zu lernen. En este momento el precio de Bitcoin es muy bajo, económico. At the moment the price of Bitcoin is very low, economic. Im Moment ist der Preis von Bitcoin sehr tief. Sería el momento ideal para invertir. Hoy es el 15 de abril 2015. Would be the ideal moment to invest. Today is April 15th, 2015. Es wäre der ideale Moment zu investieren. Heute ist der 15. April 2015. El 27 de marzo 2015 he publicado en mi canal de YouTube Vanos Enigma el primer video sobre hashtag BTC4 explicando cómo me vino esta idea. 
on March 27th of 2015. Um, I published my for the first video about hashtag BTC4 in my channel YouTube Vanus Enigma explaining how I got the idea. Am 27. März 2015 habe ich in meinem YouTube-Channel Vanus Enigma den ersten, den ersten Video über Hashtag BTC4 veröffentlicht und äh, erzählt, erklärt, wie ich diese Idee bekommen habe. La idea consiste principalmente en lo siguiente. The idea mainly consists in the following. Die idea besteht hauptsächlich in folgenden, folgendem. Imprimir en direcciones de Bitcoin en papel. Diez o mínimo diez o mejor cien. To print Bitcoin directions in paper, at least 10 or better 100. Bitcoin adressen in Papier ausdrucken, um, minimal 10 or besser gleich 100. Y luego poner en cada dirección de Bitcoin una pequeña cantidad de Bitcoin. And then put in every Bitcoin direction a little amount of Bitcoin. Und dann in jede Bitcoin Adresse eine kleine Summe von Bitcoin transferieren. Y la próxima vez, cuando otra vez ves una persona por la calle pidiendo dinero, and the next time uh, you see again a person begging for money on the street. Und das nächste Mal, wenn du wieder eine Person auf der Straße betteln siehst. Y para tus amigos y amigas. And for your friends, of course. Und für deine Freunde natürlich. O tal vez eh, de propina en un restaurante. Or maybe a tip in a restaurant. Oder trinkgeld im restaurant. Bueno, a la hora de imprimir también copiar y guardar las llaves privadas de Bitcoin. De direcciones de Bitcoin. Or when you print the Bitcoin addresses, um, copy and save the private keys of the Bitcoin addresses, of course. Wenn man die Bitcoin Adressen druckt, auch die, uh, auch die privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin Address Schlüsseln, um, kopieren und speichern. Y a la hora de distribuir las direcciones de Bitcoin, escribir la fecha, por ejemplo, hoy es el 15 de abril 2015, escribir la fecha más plus cuatro años, uh, igual 15 de abril 2019. And then in the moment when you distribute uh, the Bitcoin addresses, you write the date, for example, today, April 15th, 2015, plus, plus four years uh, is April 15th, 2019. Und dann in dem Moment, wenn man die Bitcoin-Adressen verteilt, auf das Papier schreiben, das heutige Datum, zum Beispiel 15. April 2015, plus vier Jahre 
ist gleich 15.04.2019. Luego vas a explicar a la gente, mira, esta es la llave privada. Tú y yo la tengo, la tienes. Si no quitas, transfieres este dinero de Bitcoin, eh, en estos cuatro años yo lo vuelvo a tener. Nero sacar. Then you explain to the people, look, this is the private key. I have it and you have it. If you don't take this money, Bitcoin, out of this account, I will take it out in, this, um, in these four years, at the end of these four years. Und dann erklärst du den Leuten, schau, das ist der private Schlüssel. Um, ich und du haben diesen privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin-Schlüssel. Wenn du äh, bis Ende dieser vier Jahre das Geld Bitcoin nicht raus tust, transfer, äh, dann hole ich es zurück. De esta forma, das más motivación a la gente para empezar a aprender cómo funciona Bitcoin. This way, you give more motivation to the people to learn how the technology of Bitcoin functions. Auf diese Weise gibst du mehr Motivation den Leuten zu lernen, wie die Technologie von Bitcoin funktioniert. En mi video antiguo he explicado eh, cómo he tomado la decisión de los cuatro años. In my old video, I explained how I made the decision for the four years. In meinem original video habe ich erklärt, wie ich zu die Entscheidung getroffen habe äh, mit den vier Jahren. A continuación voy a pegar este video. Now, later, I will paste this video. Im Anschluss werde ich diesen Video ankleben. En este momento el precio de Bitcoin es muy económico. Uh, at the moment the price of Bitcoin is very cheap. Pero casi todo el mundo tiene muy poco dinero para invertir. But almost everybody has a very little money to invest. Debería decir que esta idea me vino hoy especialmente cuando vi otra vez una chica ahí pidiendo dinero por la calle. Actually, I must say first this idea today I got especially when I saw again um, one girl begging for money in the streets. Me gustaría ayudar, pero yo tampoco me sobra mucho el dinero. I would really like to help everybody, but I, I don't have either too much money. And así que me vino la siguiente idea. So I got the following idea. It's, uh, it's más bien un juego. Uh, it's a rather a game. Um, lo que es muy importante elegir un monedero de Bitcoin que solo tú mismo misma, tienes la llave privada. What is very important to choose um, Bitcoin wallet a company which you only possess the private key. For example, uh, blockchain.info. Por ejemplo, la empresa 
blockchain.info. Luego imprimir en papel um, la llave privada y también guardarlo tú mismo. Then to print in paper the private key and uh, of course save for, for yourself that private key. Bueno, ya estamos imprimiendo, imprime por lo menos 10. So now we are already printing, so at least print 10 directions, 10 direcciones. Luego pones algo de Bitcoin, una cantidad, lo que, lo que te da la gana en esta dirección. Then you put some Bitcoin. Uh, the amount, whatever you want, and that in these directions. Y la próxima vez que sales de casa ya tienes algo que dar a los que están ahí pidiendo por la calle. And the next time you go out of the house, you have already something to give for these people who are begging on the streets. Y por ejemplo, y claro, para tus amigos, amigas, and for your friends, of course. Eso da motivación a la gente para aprender Bitcoin y this gives motivation for the people to learn about Bitcoin. Y la parte del juego consiste en lo siguiente. And the game part uh, consists in the following. Explicas a la gente, mira, esta es la cl clave privada, que es la clave secreta. You explain to the people, look, this is the private key, which must be secret. And uh, you have it and uh, me. And uh, explicas, esa persona y yo mismo la tiene. Y antes pensaba en cinco años, pero luego cambié un poco de idea de hasta cuatro años. First, I thought of five years, but then I changed uh, my opinion to four years. Later, explain. Después, lo expli explico por qué. Les dices, mira, tienes cuatro años para poner esta cantidad de Bitcoin a otra dirección. Si no lo, lo has quitado después de cuatro años, yo lo quito. So you explain them, you have four years to take this Bitcoin out of this direction, of this secret uh, key direction. If uh, you don't do it, uh, I do it after these four years. So you lose this. That's the, this part of the game. Es la parte del juego. He creado este hashtag uh, BTC4 para hacerlo un poco popular. I created this hashtag BTC4 to make it a little popular. Antes pensaba en cinco años, pero luego cambié a cuatro porque te has dado cuenta que en los Simpsons la gente tiene cuatro dedos. Y Solo do, Dios tiene cinco dedos. Um, first, I thought of five years, but then I changed my mind to four years. Um, did you notice that in The Simpsons, people have a four fingers and only God has five fingers. Uh, I'll show some pictures. Voy a enseñar algunos imágenes de los Simpsons. De los manos y dedos de Simpsons. Some pictures of the hands and fingers of Simpsons. Uh, pero antes
les quiero recordar que um, es muy probable que en también cuatro o cinco en los próximos años el valor de Bitcoin puede subir mucho. Just want to remember before that uh, the price of Bitcoin, the value of Bitcoin can rise very much in these next years. Así que si solo pones una cantidad pequeña más tarde, puede ser de gran ayuda. Even if you just put a little small amount later, it can be a big help. Uh, no solo para, bueno, es un juego. <laughs> si la persona lo quita antes de cuatro años, para, es para esta persona. Si no, es para ti. Si te recuerdas y guardas bien la llave privada. So uh, it's... This is the game part. If uh, the, the person takes the money out, it's for that person. But if they forget it after these four years, you can take it out. And it can be really... <laughs> bueno, imprimir también la llave pública y la llave privada. Y si, por ejemplo... Okay, first translate. Print and not just the private key, but on also the public key. Así que si, por ejemplo, explicas a la gente. Mira, si alguna persona quiere enviarte Bitcoin, pero tú no tienes ninguna dirección, así que puedes dar este, esta llave pública a la persona. Mira, muy bien, la llave pública, no la llave secreta das a esa persona o cualquier persona y te pueden enviar un Bitcoin a esa dirección. So, remember, uh, the public key you can give to anybody and if somebody wants to send you some Bitcoin and, you, and this person doesn't have any, so you have already this public address where they can send you Bitcoin. This is Armageddon News. On the agenda today, we discuss the mark of the beast, its connection to worship and trade, what the consequences are of taking it, and its startling links to Islamic scripture. Good day. A former Islamic terrorist named Walid Shubat, who has become a born-again Christian, has discovered a connection between the name of Allah and the 666. He explains that the Greek letters, XES, which John wrote in Greek, are actually the Arabic phrase, Bishmillah, which means, in the name of Allah. He says that what John saw, were actually Arabic letters, which John could not read, but which bore a resemblance to the Greek alphabet in which John wrote. It would have been pointless to write symbols of another language which could not be read by the Greek readers of Revelation. 
so it is very possible that the Arabic Bishmillah is indeed what John saw and recorded in Greek letters. The first symbol of 666 are the Muslim crossed swords, the X character, a symbol of Islam and Jihad, which are often used by Muslims on flags and military symbols. Notice the handles on the swords. The middle, E, symbol, is an Islamic symbol called Bishmillah, Arabic for Allah, or, in the name of Allah. When you turn the Bishmillah on its side and place it in a mirror, it forms the same Middle Greek character, as written by John. Notice the line drawn, above Allah, and the hook, on its end. The line, it is part of the word Allah, it is not an underline. Notice the same hook in the line drawn by John. It matches the line, in the name Allah exactly. The third character is the Greek character stigma, which means mark, or badge of servitude. The Greek XES or 666, has been noted not just in the Bishmillah, but also in the Shahada, which is the Islamic confession of faith, which is what the Quran states, will be written on the badge of servitude, on the Day of Judgment. The XES, has also been noted, on an Islamic Chechen flag, which bears the crossed swords and the name Alu Akbar, meaning God is greater. This flag bears a striking resemblance to the Greek XES, as written by John. Even bearing the line, above the letter E, in the name, Allah. It has also been noted, that in the Arabic calligraphy form, the name, Alu Akbar, contains three sixes which can be clearly seen. Therefore a direct connection, between the name, Allahu Akbar and the number 666 can be perceived. The Bible speaks about taking the mark, on the forehead or right hand. It has been pointed out, that Muslims are already wearing marks, on their foreheads and arms, as Islamic banners of protest, and jihad. So Muslims have already been conditioned to take the mark, as a symbol of their belief. The Greek word sharagma, used for mark, means a stamp, an imprinted mark. So a follower of the Antichrist, will have a stamp on their body, or on some form of badge, to be placed on the forehead or arm. In John's time, the use for sharagma was reserved for slaves in what was called, a badge of servitude. So, it's a badge, that declares slavery, and ownership by the master. And his followers, use it to demonstrate allegiance to this master. This would fit Islam, since according to Islamic theology, Muslims are slaves of Allah. And Islam is the religion of, submission. Take a look at the many different Islamic headbands, which have been created, for a Muslim to wear, as a sign of their faith. There is a very interesting headband, which actually has the XES and the name of Allah, written on it, with crossed swords. They call it, the Shahid, headband. Strong's Hebrew Dictionary, tells us exactly what the name Allah, really means. The name Allah is actually the Hebrew word, for curse, or oath. Strong's Dictionary says it's, an imprecation, curse, cursing, execration, oath, or swearing. So, Allah is actually the word, for a curse. And amazingly, it was the serpent in the Garden of Eden which became the first being, to be cursed by God. Therefore a connection, between the serpent, being cursed, and Allah, which means, a curse, is very surprising. It would appear that by wearing the name Allah, you are in point of fact, wearing a curse. Which would explain why the name Allah, is in the shape, of the cursed serpent. In the Bible, Revelation 12 9 describes Satan as the great dragon, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan. Then the book of Revelation, goes on to speak about the great dragon Satan, giving his throne to the Antichrist, and a group of people, worshipping the dragon, which has given them this Antichrist king. Revelation 13 4. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who, is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? What people would knowingly worship the dragon Satan? The answer is none. These people have no idea they are actually worshipping Satan. But they are shouting his praises in the streets, because the dragon has given them, a king. What type of people, would actually stand in the street, 
praising their god for giving them an empire and strong king, that no one dare make war against. How do Muslims praise their god? By shouting Allahu Akbar. This is how they worship the dragon Satan. By shouting Allah is great. The Bible doesn't just call Satan the dragon but, the great, dragon. The great, is actually part of the name of Allah. But in the Bible the great, is part of the name for the dragon. Even the whore of Babylon who rides the beast, has a name written on her head. Mystery Babylon, the great. A city that thinks she is great. The word for great is Akbar, and is indeed a boast, which only the Muslims cry out. The other meaning of the Hebrew word Allah, or curse, is an oath. A binding oath. As we'll discover later, a binding oath, is exactly what Allah requires, from his followers. In the Garden of Eden, while speaking to the serpent, God gave us a very profound prophecy, concerning the end days. Genesis 3.15 says, I will make you and the woman hate each other. Her offspring and yours, will always be enemies. Her offspring, will crush your head. And you will bite her offspring's heel. God spoke of hatred between, the serpent Satan, and the woman Israel. Then he speaks about two seeds. The seed of the woman, and the seed of the serpent. The seed of the woman, whose heel was bitten, by the serpent, was the promised Messiah, Jesus Christ, which was crucified having nails driven through his feet, which left him with two puncture marks. As if he had been bitten by a serpent. But who is the seed of the serpent? I believe it is speaking, about the promised son of the serpent, a false messiah. To find out, who these two opposing races are, we don't have to look very far. We know that the woman is Israel. Which gave birth to the messiah. We only need now look, for the race of people, which according to this verse hates Israel, like the serpent does. This race is none other than the Muslims. But wait, God, is describing that a seed, will come from the serpents. This seed of the serpent, is describing the Antichrist, which will come from the people, which Satan has chosen, because of their hatred for Israel. Just like Jesus, was the promised seed of the woman, Israel. So Islam is also waiting, for Allah, to send them a promised Messiah. Called the Imam Mahdi, Islam's twelfth Imam. This Mahdi, is the seed of the serpent, Allah. And this Mahdi, will become the Caliph and King of Islam. Uniting all, the divided Islamic lands, which were given a deadly head wound, when the Caliph of the Ottoman Empire, was dissolved. Causing their empire to break up. This Caliph will unite the Islamic lands, and will restore the office, of the Caliph. Which the Bible describes, as the deadly head wound, being healed. And all the Islamic world will wander after the beast. He will also be the one, to wage war against Jesus Christ, in the battle of Armageddon. A startling connection, between the mark of the beast and Islamic belief about the last days, has been discovered. Amazingly, and in keeping perfectly with what the Bible predicted so long ago, regarding the beast and his mark, the badge of servitude, is in fact an Islamic commandment from Muhammad himself. Who said, Allah, will save a man from my nation, above all creation on judgment day. In front of him will be laid ninety-nine registers, for his sins. Every register, is as long as the eye can see. Then he is asked, do you deny any of these? Then he says, no, O Lord. Then he is asked, do you have any excuse? He responds, no Lord, then he is told, you have but one good deed, and there will be no condemnation for you today. A badge is brought forth. Scrolled across it are the words, no God but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. Then he asked to bring forth his deeds. He asks, O Lord, what is this badge that is with these registers? He is told, you will receive no condemnation. The deeds are put on one hand, and the badge in the other. Then the registers will float, and the badge will outweigh the registers. Tamathi 2639. The badge of servitude, is the Islamic counterfeit of Jesus Christ. Which Muhammad claimed, would pardon the wearer, of all their sins, on judgment day. To sum it up, the name of the beast, along with variations of the name of Allah, will be made compulsory, 
as a sign of submission on the right arm or forehead. Islam is submission and allegiance to a foreign god, the badge being spoken of, by Muhammad is the Shahada, which is blasphemous, and is worn by Muslims as a badge on the foreheads. The Shahada is the Muslim declaration of belief. It states, there is no god but Allah, and Muhammad, is the messenger of Allah. If this Shahada is part of the mark of the beast, those who take it, will be forever denying Jesus, as the Son of God, and sealing themselves to Islam. Which is the only religion, which actually denies Jesus, as the Son of God, in its scriptures. The Bible mentions this as one of the prerequisites of the Antichrist and his followers. That he will deny Jesus as the Son of God. 1 John 2.22 says, Who is the liar, but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is the Antichrist, who denies the Father and the Son. Denying that Jesus is the Son of Father God, is a Muslim belief. They state it is blasphemous, that God, could have had, a son. So wearing any mark, or badge of Islam, would be to officially deny Jesus Christ, the only hope of salvation. These things meet the biblical requirements for the mark of the beast. The only thing left to be instituted, is the official government mark. Issued by the Islamic Empire. A mark, without which, no one will be able to buy, or sell, unless they have shown allegiance to Islam. There will be no hope of salvation, for those, who take, that mark. Even the part of the Bible that predicted the beast will mark the foreheads is in the Quran and the Hadith. Al-Ard, literally the beast of the earth, is an Islamic version of the account of the beast of the earth, in Revelation 13:11. But unlike the Bible, in which the beast is evil, the Quran, gives him a holy mission to revive Islam. And mark the foreheads, of all true Muslim believers. According to Islamic tradition, the beast emerges in the last days. The Quran states, and when the word is fulfilled concerning them, we shall bring forth, a beast of the earth to speak unto them. Because mankind had not faith in our revelations, Quran 27:82, The Prophet of Islam declared, the first signs that will come is the rising of the sun, from the place of his setting, and emergence of the beast, upon the people. Whichever of these two occurs before the other, then the other is right behind it. Why do Muslims, mark their foreheads with badges of submission to Allah? It comes from their belief, that the end days are near. Their Quran states, the task of the beast, will be to distinguish the believers from the non-believers. With Prophet Moses' staff, it the beast, will draw a line, on the forehead of every Muslim believer. Whereby his face, will become bright and illuminous, and with a ring of Solomon. It will seal the nose of every non-believer. Whereby his whole face will become black. Thus there will be complete distinction, between the Muslim, and non-Muslim. So that if many parties sit at a dinner table, the Muslim and non-Muslim will be distinguished. So Muslims describe, that the false prophet, or beast of the earth will mark their foreheads with the staff of Moses. The staff of Moses, was used to perform the miracles and plagues of Egypt. It was also Moses' staff, which turned into a snake. Now the Muslims, are describing being marked on the forehead, with the serpent staff of Moses. A staff which brought curses upon Egypt, and will bring a curse upon those who take its mark. From this we see, the Muslims are describing a man with great power and a worker of miraculous miracles. But the Bible says that this beast of the earth's power will be the working of Satan, and not God. Can you imagine a Muslim's shock? When they study the Bible. Muslims are taught that a beast would come out of the earth, and he would mark the foreheads of all true Muslims. Do you see how Satan, has turned everything upside down for Muslims? Muslims are being taught to desire the mark of the beast. Earlier, we discussed the name, Allah. Not only, that it meant curse, but also that it meant an oath. This is because Allah, requires all his followers to take an oath of allegiance. In the early days of Muhammad's career, he often asked those who had expressed a desire to follow him, to make a pledge of allegiance or submission to him. This pledge is known as bayah. It is an outward oath, or pledge promising allegiance and complete submission, to the emir or caliph. After Muhammad died, this practice of making a pledge, 
was carried on, under the caliphs. The Muslims would make a pledge of allegiance to the caliph, and likewise the caliph would make a pledge of allegiance to Allah. To rule strictly according to Islamic law. Many Islamists including, Adnan Oktar, often speak about the restoration of the Islamic caliphate, in the Middle East. They also mention the Pledge of Allegiance or Bayah. Under a Muslim empire, it is mandatory, for every Muslim to take this Pledge of Allegiance, and to submit by binding themselves, to the Caliph, as their master. The Arabic name for this pledge, is Bayah, which shockingly translates, as the word sell. Muslims are well aware of this, that by taking this pledge, they are selling themselves, to the Caliph, as a slave. The Bible says, Revelation 14:9. If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment, ascends up for ever and ever. This worship of the Antichrist, or his emblem, describes perfectly the Pledge of Allegiance to the Caliph as Master. Once people have worshipped him, they will receive his mark to show their submission, and will wear it proudly, on their foreheads or hands. The first Ahmadiyya Caliph, issued a warning. To those wishing, to offer their bayah at his hand. By saying, if you want to do bayah at my hand, be very clear, what bayah means. Bayah means to sell, yourselves. A man gives up everything, and that is why Allah, has called this man, Abd. Meaning one who worships. Notice that it is made clear, that Bayah, is worship. So when the Bible says that people will worship the beast, Bayah, is by Islamic definition. Worship. It now makes perfect sense, why the Greek word for mark, which is sharagma in the book of Revelation, means a badge of servitude, as a slave. For people are going to sell their souls to the Antichrist, and receive God's judgment, of fire and damnation for eternity, without rest. Unfortunately Islam has deceived Muslims, into wanting this mark and portraying it as something holy, rather than a seal, which will damn their souls, to eternal fire and suffering. Like anxious children, many very eager Islamists look forward to the day, when all Islamic citizens, of the regions and lands under the Caliphate, will be required to make a pledge to the Caliph. According to Islamic tradition, those who do not make this pledge will die the death of an idolater. The Islamic tradition states, one who withdraws his hand from the obedience to the ruler, Emir, will find no argument in his defense, when he stand before Allah, on the day of judgment. And one who dies without having bound himself, by an oath of allegiance, Bayah, to an Emir, will die the death, of one belonging to the days of Jahiliyyah. Pre-Islamic days of ignorance, and idolatry. Similar to the Antichrist, Islamists are already planning to kill those, who refuse to give allegiance to the Emir, or Caliph as their spiritual leader. The evidence of the mistreatment of Christians and Jews in the Islamic system is immense. But it will of course only increase in the days to come. This is what the Bible warned, when it stated that whoever did not worship the beast, and receive his mark would be killed. It's no coincidence, that the Bible states, the method of killing will be beheading for that is the system of capital punishment found in Islamic countries. Which shows us definitively, that the Antichrist will indeed rise, and begin his global war, from the Middle East, and not the EU, as has been believed. Revelation 24 And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded, for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ, a thousand years. The mark of the beast, will be visible on the forehead or hand, as a means of discerning people, who have not yet submitted, to the king of the Middle East. The mark is directly linked to the worship and submission to the beast. The means, of being able to buy, and sell, is only a secondary result. The main purpose of the mark, is to be a visible sign, to distinguish those who have worshipped the beast versus those who have not. The worship of the beast and the mark go hand in hand, as soon as people have worshipped they will receive the mark of their submission. Seeing that the Antichrist's empire will be Islamic, he will enforce a law that, 
without the mark people will not be allowed to buy, or sell. So if you went to a grocery store, and the cashier didn't see the mark, on your forehead or hand, showing that you submitted to the beast and his empire, the cashier would not be allowed to take your money. The Book of Revelation does not say, that money will not exist, only that buying and selling, would be prohibited without the mark. God is concerned with the worship and submission to the beast. And the sealing of oneself, with the name of a false god. It's the submission, to the Islamic Antichrist, and the worship, of the Empire's image, which sends people to hell, not the buying and selling. Once people have sealed themselves, with the mark of the Islamic Empire, they will share the same fate, as the Antichrist. Which the Bible states is the lake of fire. By taking this mark, they will be denying Yahweh, and his son, Jesus Christ, and sealing themselves with the name of this false god, and a false belief system which denies Jesus Christ, as the son of God. There will be no forgiveness of this sin. Only the terrible fate, which has been foretold, and eternal suffering. The Bible states, the false prophet will perform wondrous miracles. Even making what seems like holy fire, descend from heaven. And by these miracles, he will lead millions astray, into submitting and worshipping this Middle East king, who claims to be God. His miracles will be so deceptive that Jesus warns that the elect of God may even be deceived by his lies and miraculous wonders. The Bible says many will fall away and believe that God is speaking through this man. But the true believers will stand their ground, and hold on to their faith in Jesus Christ, even under terrible persecution and beheading. And they will be the ones better off in the end. And be resurrected, when Jesus Christ returns. For the slaughter of the Christians, God will pour out his judgment. And cause a terribly painful sore, to appear on those, who have taken the mark or worship the Antichrist's image. The original Greek, describes this sore as a foul, and malignant, ulcerated sore, or an evil, poisoning wound. It will appear, like boils, all over their bodies. And the pain, will be so bad, that they will cry out in agony. With no relief. This will be part of God's judgment, for turning on the Christians and putting them to death. The Bible, says that the Antichrist, will proclaim that he is God. No doubt, he will claim that judgment day has come. And he is judging the world, by putting Christians and Jews to death, for blasphemy. With his army, he will conquer Jerusalem. And take over the Jewish temple. He will sit down in God's temple, proclaiming that he is God. The Bible, in 2 Thessalonians 2 4 says. He will oppose every so-called God, or object of worship, and will put himself above them all. He will even go in and sit down in God's temple, and claim to be God. Daniel 11.31 says, He will send troops to pollute the temple and the fortress, and he will stop the daily sacrifices. Then he will set up that horrible thing, that causes destruction. Daniel 12.11 says, From the time the daily burnt offering is taken away, and the disgusting thing, that causes destruction, is set up, there will be 1,290 days. This horrible thing, is called the abomination, which causes desolation. God says, it will sit there 1,290 days. Then Jesus will appear from heaven to wage war, against the Antichrist, who will have deceived the whole world, into believing he was God, through his satanic miracles. The Shiite Muslims, claim that their Mahdi, will rule from the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. And the Bible states emphatically that he is the Antichrist, who will sit in God's temple. Joel Richardson, who has written extensively, about the coming Islamic Antichrist, states that the Prime Minister of Turkey, Recep Erdogan, is paving the way for the Antichrist. As he is trying to revive the Ottoman Caliphate, in Turkey. The resurrection of the Ottoman Caliphate, could describe the beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And after which the whole world will be amazed seeing an old Middle East empire, restored. The Tugra, was the personal seal of the Ottoman Caliphs. And every Ottoman Caliph had his personal seal designed in the same pattern. The Tugra consists of the name of the father and the son, the ruling Caliph. And the words forever victorious. 
a triple S, has always been considered, an occult mystery Babylonian way, of writing the 666. Interestingly, a triple S, can clearly be seen, in the seal of the Ottomans. If the mark, is to be stamped on the skin of the forehead, or hand, it doesn't necessarily have to be a permanent tattoo. Although, it may very well be. But Muslims have been using henna tattoos for hundreds of years. So it's possible, that henna may be used, as the means by which these marks, are stamped on the skin. But the mark, may also take the form of a badge, to be worn on the forehead or right arm. As the word for mark, which is sharagma, can also mean a badge, of servitude. It must also be noted, that the Taliban have also been trying to revive the Islamic Caliphate, in Iraq. And, the President of Iran, is making himself the personal spokesman for the Mahdi, the Islamic Messiah. As the Quran teaches, that the Mahdi will emerge out of chaos. So the Iranian President, has made it his mission, to create this chaos, so that the Mahdi will appear, and bring on the Day of Judgment. Jesus said that oaths, and pledges, come from Satan himself. This includes swearing on a Bible in court. No wonder the Antichrist, requires people to swear, an oath of allegiance to him. Jesus said in Matthew 5:34, But I say to you, take no oaths at all. But let your words be simply, yes or no, and whatever is more than these, is of the evil one. So to recap, do not take the bayah, the oath of allegiance to the Mahdi or Caliph who claims to be God. And utters blasphemies against Jesus Christ, even denying him as the Son of God. Do not take the mark of his empire, as a stamp on your forehead or hand. Or wear his mark, as a badge on your forehead or right arm. And do not worship the image which he sets up, even though it speaks, and you may be put to death, or imprisoned, because of your refusal to bow to it. Rather believe, in God's only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, for your sins. Call upon his name, and you shall be saved. Only Jesus, has the power to save. His name, is the only one, in all the world that can save anyone. For the original name of Jesus, in Hebrew, is, Yeshua. Which means, salvation. And salvation, is found in no other. So cry out to God today, in the name of his son Yeshua. Believe in what he did for you on the cross, and you shall be, saved. John 3:16. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son. That whoever believes in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Please pray this prayer, today. Father God, I believe that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for my sins. I believe that he died, and was resurrected, and is coming back to judge the living and the dead. Father, I repent. Please forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart, and make me, your child. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have said this prayer, you are now, a child of God. Please go and find a born again, Christian church, where you can have fellowship, with other believers. Thank you for listening. Please see, our other broadcasts, on the end days. This program has no copyright, and may be distributed freely. The Islamic Antichrist Book, by John Preacher, contains astounding insights into the Book of Revelation. And it's available for free, and can be downloaded, from the address below. For more books and videos on the Islamic Antichrist, visit Joel Richardson's website www.jolstrumpet.com This is Armageddon News. In this broadcast, we'll discover the ancient mark of Satan's kingdom. We'll find out who Babylon the Great really is and will discover, why Turkey will be the seat, of the Antichrist.
Good day. Many have long speculated on who Babylon the Great really is. Rome has been the prime candidate for many, as well as New York. But neither of these is the true Babylon. The Bible tells us that this Babylon is a mystery to the world, but the Bible declares plainly exactly where mystery Babylon is located. It's not the original Babylon in Iraq. But yet its practices are identical to Babylon's. The Babylonian religious system revolved around the worship of the heavens, the sun, moon, and stars. The crescent and star symbol is the very key not only to who Mystery Babylon is, but also to the identity of the beast. The crescent and star is known to be the symbol of Islam. But these ancient and demonic symbols were also the very symbols of Baal Hammon. Baal, the ancient Mesopotamian false god, mentioned in the Bible, who was worshipped together with Ashtaraf, the star goddess. These symbols go all the way back to Nimrod and Semiramis. Semiramis was the wife of Nimrod, but she was also his mother. This disgusting harlot started all the false religions of the world. When God changed the people's languages and they stopped building Nimrod's Tower of Babel, this cult of Nimrod and Semiramis continued to spread into those divided nations, most of which have a god and goddess as the basis of their false religion, which began with Nimrod and Semiramis. Their cult went from one empire to the next. In Egypt, they were called Osiris and Isis. In Assyria, Asher and Ishtar. In Babylon, Bel and Belit. In Persia, Mithra and Anahita. In Greece, Helios and Artemis. In Rome, Apollo and Diana. Throughout the Bible, they are mainly called Baal and Ashtaroth, the Queen of Heaven. In the Book of Acts, they are called Moloch and Rephan. You even took along the tent of Moloch, the star of your god Rephan, and the images you made in order to worship them. But throughout all their name changes, one thing remained the same. The symbols by which these false gods are identified. The crescent and star. In Egypt, the crescent and star was carried on the head of Isis. And the Apis bull also carried the sun disk image of Isis between his crescent-shaped horns. And if you take a closer look, you can see that the real author of these symbols is the serpent. And he is the one receiving the worship through these symbols of the crescent and star. The Bible tells us that the serpent is Satan. During Roman times, Semiramis was worshipped under the name Diana. Diana's image was once again the crescent and star of Islam. And they too bowed down and worshipped her image in the form of a meteorite, which fell from heaven. Because the meteorite depicted her astrological, moon and star image. When the apostles tried to minister to the people in Ephesus, all of them with one voice went on crying out for about two hours, Great is Diana of Ephesus. And having quieted the crowd, the city clerk said, Men of Ephesus, for what man is there who does not know that the city of the Ephesians is the temple keeper? of the great goddess Diana, and of the image fallen from heaven. Clearly the image which fell from heaven, was a meteorite. And the worshippers of Diana, all worshipped her in the same way, by shouting great, great, great is Diana. This is exactly how the Muslims praise Allah. And they bow toward the city of Mecca, repeating Allahu Akbar, over and over again. For Allahu Akbar, means Allah is great and it's the very same cry heard by the worshippers of Diana. As they bow toward the great city of Mecca, Mecca has become just like Ephesus, the city which held the meteorite image, which fell down from heaven. They too chanted that Diana was great. For the Muslims, just like Ephesus, also bow down to an image which fell from heaven. And Muslims are seen kissing and caressing the stone, as if the stone was a woman. Indeed Mecca is the great harlot, whose worshippers call her great. And it's the very title, written on her forehead. Babylon the Great. When the angel took John into the desert, to see this harlot, he told him that it wasn't just a false religious system, but a religious city, as well. The only religious city, which can be found in a desert, is Mecca. 
and shockingly, the very symbol of the star of Semiramis, the harlot, is still being worshipped today, by Muslims around the world. In the form of the Kaaba stone. The Muslims claim that the Kaaba stone, was a star which fell from heaven. It's the very same star symbol of Semiramis, the Queen of Heaven. And she is still being worshipped today, exactly where the angel, said this harlot could be found. In the wilderness, or desert. Babylon is not Rome, neither is it New York, for neither of those places, are found in a desert. The last time Israel was in the desert, they were also worshipping a false god. The golden calf, which Moses smashed. This was the same bull calf god, from Egypt. The bull god, carried the very symbol, of the harlot Isis, between its crescent-shaped horns. Thanks to the discoveries, of Ron Wyatt, we know exactly that this false worship, took place in the desert of Saudi Arabia. Where the altar for the golden calf still stands, kept secret by the Saudi Arabian government. The very same country and desert, where the Jews were worshipping this golden calf beast, and star symbol of the harlot, is the same country and desert, in which we find, the city, of Mecca. Mecca, has become the global center, of moon and star worship. The exact same religion of ancient Babylon. Before Islam, Mecca was a city, dedicated to many false gods. The false goddess, Alat, was the wife of Allah. Alat was the moon goddess, and fertility goddess Semiramis, which Satan has used from the beginning. Her shrine was the Kaaba, which housed Alat's most famous idol, a black stone meteorite. Muhammad took the city of Mecca in 632, and Muhammad entered her shrine, and destroyed Alat's idols. Yet her black stone idol, was preserved. And Muhammad even helped to position her black stone idol, in the east wall of the Kaaba. Indeed the Kaaba stone, is the idol of the harlot. The angel told John that this harlot sits on many waters. Then he said to me, the waters which you saw, where the harlot sits, are peoples, multitudes, nations and languages. The angel told John, that the waters were not seas, but people from all over the world. From many peoples, nations and languages. This is an amazing description, seeing as the Muslims come from all over the world, for the Hajj. These people flow in, and circle around the Kaaba, like water. Indeed this harlot does sit, on many people's nations and languages. And they all fall down, and worship the image of Semiramis or Diana, which fell from heaven. The Muslim call to prayer, exactly mirrors, Nebuchadnezzar's form of worship. Nebuchadnezzar set up an image, in the plain of Jura. When all the people in his kingdom heard the music, which was a call to prayer. They all had to bow down, toward the image which he set up. Or, he said they would be put to death. This is identical, to the Islamic form of worship. It's exactly the same form of Babylonian worship, instituted by Nebuchadnezzar. And at the call to prayer, Muslims just like the Babylonians, all fall down and worship an image. The worship of Bel, in Babylon, revolved around sun worship. And astoundingly the Islamic prayer times, are based on the five positions of the sun, throughout the day. In fact, the five prayer times, have to be judged by things like. What the sun's color is. How long the shadow is. Or whether there is light left in the sky. You can find out from Wikipedia how Islamic prayer times, are tied, to the sun, itself. The very beast system of Babylonian worship is already in place, waiting for the speaking image of the beast. Which may, be the very Kaaba stone, itself. Which Muhammad declared, would one day speak, and give wisdom to all who touch it. Very few people have connected the dots to Islam. Those who refuse to bow toward the Islamic beast's image, when the call from the minarets is heard, throughout the Islamic empire, will be put to death. Just like they were, under Nebuchadnezzar. In Babylon, they worshipped the sun god, through the magic square. And the Babylonian priests wore these sun seal amulets, as seals of protection, from the gods themselves. They believed that the numbers 1 to 36 represented the 36 constellations which were also gods. And the total of all the numbers, 
equaled 666, which also represented the sun god, which was their king. Hidden in the Babylonian square, is a six-sided symbol. A symbol, which encompassed all their false gods. This shape, creates a three-dimensional, cube, or house, for these gods. Which is exactly the shape, of the Kaaba, itself. But that's not all. Seeing as the Babylonian sun god, was the supreme ruler, over these other gods, or constellations. Its number, was placed outside, the square. The very same position, in which we find the 666, on the Babylonian seal. Is the exact same position, we find the Kaaba stone, built into the Kaaba's wall. Without doubt, the Kaaba stone, is intricately connected, with Babylonian sun worship, and worship of the heavens. The very name Kaaba, in English, means square, or, cube. It's the same magic square, the Babylonians used, to worship their sun god. The black Kaaba, represents the sun, around which all the Muslims, like stars, revolve. Some prominent Islamists, have said that Muslims circling the Kaaba, resembles the orbit, of the galaxy. Wikipedia says, it has been proposed, for example, that the act of Tawaf closely resembles the shape of a galaxy, when viewed from above. This circling, is interesting, because the very place, where Nebuchadnezzar placed his idol, was called Jura. And Jura means, circle. Muslims portray Allah, in symbols of the sun, and star. And you can clearly see, on the Kaaba doors, that the name of Allah, is portrayed, with sun, symbols. In the Bible, which has been translated into Arabic, there is something very surprising. Found in the Arabic number, 666, is a word. And that word, is stone. As in, Kaaba stone. The Bible is telling us, that the 666, is directly linked to the Kaaba stone, of Islam. The Bible describes the beast, as coming from the sea. So it was interesting to discover, that in nautical sea miles, the distance, from the Kaaba in Mecca, to the Dome of the Rock, in Jerusalem, is exactly 666 nautical miles. Muhammad, called the Black Stone, Yamin Allah, which means, the right hand, of Allah. But in the Bible, Jesus himself, is referred to as the right hand of God. And he sits at his father's right hand. He is also called, the corner stone. So this stone is literally a replacement, for Christ. Muhammad also declared that by doing the Hajj, which is making the pilgrimage to Mecca, once per year, circling around the Kaaba stone seven times, and then touching it, that Allah, uses the black stone, to take your sins away. Once again we can see Christ being replaced by this stone. For the Bible says, it is Jesus, who takes away our sins, through his sacrifice. And Muhammad has replaced Jesus Christ, with a stone, fallen from heaven. Moses clearly said, And beware, lest you raise your eyes to heaven, and when you see the sun and the moon and the stars, all the host of heaven, you be drawn away, and bow down to them, and serve, them. Deuteronomy 4:19. Without doubt Muslims, are clearly disobeying God, by bowing down to a star fallen from heaven. Acts 7:39 says, But our ancestors refused to obey him. They pushed him aside and wished that they could go back to Egypt, it was then that they made an idol in the shape of a bull, offered sacrifice to it, and had a feast in honor, of what they themselves had made. So God, turned away from them, and gave them over to worship the stars of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. God says he will turn away, from those who worship the host of heaven. For this has been the religion, of the heathen, throughout the generations of the world. And it's also, the very religion of Islam. The angel told John, that the religious city of Babylon, had a name written on her forehead. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. The very name of Mecca, means mother, of all settlements. Indeed Mecca, is the mother of Islamic cities around the world. And the abominations of Baal, which top all her Islamic mosques. And she is mother of Islamic terrorism 
and responsible for the deaths of Christians slaughtered in the Middle East and around the world. Revelation 17 6 says, And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs, of Jesus. This false religion, is drunk with the blood of Jihad. For she advances her religion by slaughter. But the main reason she is called mother, is because she is the biggest, false religion, in the world. She is the mother of all false religions. Note how the Bible says the Christians will die in the last days by being beheaded. And no other country beheads more people than Saudi Arabia. Without doubt, Mecca is the mother of Jihad and responsible for the deaths of Christians by beheading. The angel told John in Revelation 17 9 that this mysterious city also sits on seven hills. And Mecca, does indeed sit on seven hills. The Bible tells us that this mysterious Babylon is located near the sea. For when God causes the beast and his ten kings, to destroy Babylon, all that trade by sea, behold the smoke of her burning. As if she had been nuked. The biggest shipping lane in the world, is the Red Sea. And Mecca, sits right on this trade route. It's from here that these ships, will behold Mecca burning. Revelation 18:17 says, All the ship's captains and passengers, the sailors and all others who owned their living on the sea, stood a long way off, and cried out as they saw the smoke, from the flames that consumed her. There never has been another city like this great city. Isaiah 21 9 says, Babylon has fallen, has fallen. And all the graven images of her gods, he has smashed to the ground. John saw the same thing, in the book of Revelation. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, has fallen. But where did Isaiah, say this harlot could be found? Isaiah 21 says, This is the prophecy, against the desert, by the sea. Mystery Babylon, is a city located, in a desert, by the sea. John saw the same thing. And he carried me away into a desert, by the Spirit. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast. The prophet Jeremiah saw the destruction of the Arabian Peninsula. Edom will become an object of horror. No one will live there, or dwell in it. Hear what the Lord has planned against Edom. What he purposed against all who live in Timan. At the sound of their fall, the earth will tremble. The cry will resound, to the Red Sea. The very sea, that mystery Babylon sits near, is the Red Sea. But where is Edom, and where is Timan? In scripture, the ancient nation of Edom, stretches from Yemen, Timan, to northern Saudi Arabia, Dedan. Ezekiel 25 says, I will stretch out my hand against Edom, and kill both man and beast. I will lay it waste, from Timan, to Dedan. Isaiah 21. A prophecy against the desert by the sea. Against Duma. Someone calls to me, from Seir. A prophecy against Arabia. You caravans of dead knights, who camp in the thickets of Arabia. You who live in Tema. Within one year, all the splendor of Kidar will come to an end. Where is Duma, Seir, Arabia, Tema and Kidar? It's in the Arabian Peninsula, in modern-day Saudi Arabia. Exactly as the prophets John, Jeremiah and Isaiah said. Arabia is known in Arab because Al Jazeera, Al Arabia, meaning the Arab island, or the desert by the sea. The original Babylon is not located near the sea, but Mystery Babylon is. And the ten horns, which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the harlot, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. God warns his people to flee Mystery Babylon. Up, escape to Zion. You who dwell in daughter Babylon. Run away from Babylon. Run for your lives. You shouldn't die because of Babylon's crimes. This is the time for the vengeance of the Lord. He will pay the people of Babylon back, for what they have done. Babylon was a golden cup in the Lord's hand. It made the whole world drunk. The nations drank its wine. That is why the nations have gone insane. Sharpen the arrows. Gather the shields. Jehovah has raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, 
which is Iran. For his plan is against Babylon, to destroy it. Yes Iran, will be amongst the beast alliance nations, who destroy Mecca and Saudi Arabia. And Iran, is going to use its nuclear weapons, against Saudi Arabia. Many have wondered, what the flying scroll is in the book of Zechariah. And behold, a flying scroll. And he said to me, What do you see? And I answered, I see a flying scroll. And he said to me, This is the curse, that goes forth over the face of the whole earth. I will bring it forth, says Jehovah of hosts. And it shall enter into the house of the thief, and into the house of him who swears falsely by my name. And it shall remain in the midst of his house, and shall devour it, and its timber and its stones. This flying scroll, is a nuclear missile. For God tells Zechariah, that it will devour timber, and stones. And God even told us, from where this nuclear missile would come. God said, they would build a house for it in the land of Shinar. And it shall be established, and set there, on its own base. The land of Shinar, includes parts, of both Iraq, and Iran. But why would the beast, the Islamic Antichrist and his caliphate, want to destroy Saudi Arabia? Because she is still, a harlot. The kings of the earth, practiced sexual immorality with her. And the people of the world, became drunk from drinking the wine of her immorality. How do the kings, commit sexual immorality with Saudi Arabia? And what is the wine, which Saudi Arabia has? which has made the earth drunk. This whore, lives in a desert. And yet she produces, wine in this desert. What is the wine of the desert, which has made the earth drunk today? What wine have the kings of the earth, prostituted themselves, and their countries, to obtain? Oil. But how can we be sure, that the whore's wine, is oil? This is the time when the Lord will rescue Zion and take vengeance on her enemies. The rivers of Edom will turn into tar. And the soil will turn into sulfur. The whole country, will burn. Like tar. Tar is simple, crude oil. The beast and his alliance, which includes Iran, will destroy Saudi Arabia. And its oil, will burn. Because the beast wants full control over the Middle East's oil. And Saudi Arabia, will refuse to stop supplying the West. Which the Islamic Caliphate, wants to control. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat. And I will fight with them there for my people and for my inheritance Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations, and divided my land. And they have cast lots for my people, and have given a boy for a prostitute, and sold a girl for wine, so that they might drink. After the Islamic Antichrist conquers Jerusalem, he will divide the land up amongst the Islamic nations. And the children will be sold to the Arab nations for prostitutes, and traded for wine, which is oil. The kings of the earth, have been in bed, with Saudi Arabia. Because Saudi Arabia owns one-fifth, of the world's proven oil fields. Saudi Arabia, sells her oil across the world, especially to the west. The Islamic beast hates Saudi Arabia, because of her whoring economic policies. But God hates Saudi Arabia, for a different reason. Not only is Saudi Arabia, pouring her oil to countries, in exchange for more Islamic control over the world. But Saudi Arabia, is also the greatest whore on earth. Because she is also spreading her false religion to the world, through Mecca. And the ten horns which you saw, on the beast, these will hate the harlot, and will make her desolate and naked. And they will eat her flesh and burn her with fire. If you think it's unlikely, that the beast would attack Mecca, think again. The Islamic Caliphate, has already burned the Kaaba once. When it bombed the city of Mecca. Iran sees Saudi Arabia as a traitor for sending oil to Islam's hated enemies. Islam itself, has declared, that Mecca will be destroyed. They have said, the Mahdi will rule the world from Jerusalem, because Mecca, will be destroyed. Some Islamic prophecies, also declare that other areas of Saudi Arabia, will be destroyed as well. The flourishing state of Jerusalem, will be when Medina is in ruins. The ruined state of Medina will be, when the Great War comes. Many have missed this next verse, which describes people, 
crying over this city, and casting dust on their heads. And they cast dust on their heads, and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas! That great city! When last did you see a Westerner, casting dust on their heads, in anguish? It's not a Western custom. But it's still, an Arab Middle East custom. To cast dust on one's head in anguish. And Babylon, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited forever, nor shall it be lived in, from generation to generation. Nor shall the Arabian pitch his tent there. Nor shall the shepherds make their flocks, lie down there. Why would the Arabian be pitching his tent in the Vatican? Or in New York? The scriptures are clear. Babylon is in Saudi Arabia, that is where the Arabian pitches his tent, and where the flocks lie down. Mystery Babylon, is a city of slavery. The merchants of the earth, will weep and mourn, over her because, no one buys their cargoes anymore, human beings, sold for slaves. Saudi Arabia, has been condemned by numerous human rights groups. For its horrific treatment, of an imported foreign labor force. Saudi Arabia, is also the home, of one of the largest sex slavery trades, in the world. The harlot believes that no one can see her atrocious behavior. She boasts of seeing no sorrow. In her heart she boasts, I sit enthroned, as queen. I am not a widow. I will see no sorrow. Saudi Arabia, tries to hide the terrible conditions, of the lower class. And attempts, to cover up the abominable sex trade. And to conceal the decadent lifestyles, of the rich oil barons, who control Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is renowned, for the unparalleled decadence, of the ruling class. While her workforce, slaves away in terrible conditions. And she spends money, like a queen, according to scripture. Merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen and purple, silk and scarlet, every kind of citron wood, every kind of object of ivory, every kind of object of most precious wood, bronze, iron, and marble, and cinnamon and incense, perfume and frankincense, wine and oil, fine flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and chariots, and bodies and souls of men. The harlot Babylon is a big importer, and a massive consumer. Saudi Arabia imports these exact same goods. Saudi Arabia is famous for its gold and jewelry markets. Mecca and its suburbs, import everything. Because their entire country is a desert. The lustful, oil countries of the world. Have made Saudi Arabia rich, beyond her wildest dreams. And she is decked with gold and precious jewels. And Mecca is the city, that sits as a queen, upon the heart of the beast empire, which is the Islamic Caliphate. Soon the beast empire will be revived. And the Islamic Antichrist will proclaim that he, is the true Messiah, and Mahdi. And the false prophet, will perform miracles to deceive many. And these miracles will falsely claim Islam, to be the one true religion. And that following the Mahdi, will bring peace, money and joy, to the world. And people will flock to see, the miracles being done, by Islam. Jesus warns people not to go out to the desert to see the so-called Messiah. If you are told that the Messiah is out in the desert, don't go there. Matthew 24 26. The desert Jesus was likely referring to, is Mecca. And Jesus warns his people, not to go to this desert, to see this false Messiah. Jesus also said, that there would be false wonders, being done in Jerusalem, by false prophets. A false prophet, is someone who points to a false messiah. Indeed there will be many Muslims, trying to deceive even the elect Christians, into following the Mahdi. And there will be great signs, performed by Satan, when this Mahdi is revealed. 2 Thessalonians 2 9 says, when the wicked one appears, Satan will pretend to work all kinds of miracles, wonders, and signs. Lost people, will be fooled by his evil deeds. They could be saved, but they will refuse to love the truth and accept it. So God will make sure that they are fooled, into believing a lie. God says these people, will be deceived by these miracles of Satan because they refuse to love the truth and accept it. 
but what is the truth? It's that God became flesh, born of a woman, and suffered and died on the cross, for our sins. And was raised again from the dead. But the Islamic Antichrist and false prophet, will preach the exact opposite of the Bible. And it will be a great delusion and a lie, and this lie will be attended by the signs and miracles of Satan. And people will be drawn to Islam. You have been warned. Mystery Babylon is the mother, of all cults. Now we know, that Babylon, is Mecca. And the beast, is the coming revived Islamic Caliphate, and its king. The Book of Daniel, tells us the story behind the little horn Antichrist, and the area, from which he arises. Daniel describes the conquest of King Darius, in Persia, by Alexander the Great. The Grecian kingdom is described as a goat. And the Persian kingdom the ram. A goat came rushing out of the west, moving so fast that his feet didn't touch the ground. He had one prominent horn, between his eyes. He came toward the ram, which I had seen standing beside the river, and rushed at him with all his force. I watched him attack the ram. He was so angry, that he smashed into him and broke the two horns. The ram had no strength to resist. He was thrown to the ground, and trampled on, and there was no one who could save him. Alexander the Great conquered Persia and King Darius. The goat grew more and more arrogant, but at the height of his power, his horn was broken. In its place four prominent horns came up, each pointing in a different direction. At the height of Alexander's conquest, he suddenly died. And his four generals divided his goat empire between themselves. The Bible, then describes the little horn Antichrist, coming from one, of the parts of Alexander's divided kingdom. Out of one of these four horns, grew a little horn, whose power extended toward the south and the east and toward the promised land. It grew strong enough to attack the army of heaven. These were the divisions of Alexander's kingdom, and it's only from one of these divisions which the Antichrist can appear. He cannot come from Rome, or America. Because the Bible clearly says, that he comes, out of one of the four horns, which represent the divided kingdom of Alexander. And Alexander's four generals, never extended their kingdoms further than the Middle East. And the farthest northern part, was Greece. Daniel chapter 11, narrows the area even more, by calling the Antichrist the king of the north. The king of the north, was the Seleucus kingdom, which included Turkey, Syria, Iraq and Iran. And it's this area we should be watching for the Antichrist to appear. Let's discover where the Bible says the seat of the beast is located. The Bible even tells us, which country to watch, for the revival of the beast. It's Turkey. And it's the very country, which is now stepping forward, trying to revive the Ottoman Empire. Calling it the Neo, Ottoman, Order. Turkey is positioning itself as a peace mediator, in the Middle East. Israel, will sign the seven-year peace agreement, with Turkey. And put their trust in Turkey, relying on them for security, in the Middle East. But they will literally, be signing a covenant, with the Antichrist himself. Who will be mediating this peace deal between Israel, and many, other Muslim nations. The Bible calls this, a covenant with death and clearly tells us, that Israel, will rely on the Turkish Antichrist, until he attacks them. Turkey was the seat of the Ottoman Empire, but it was also the seat, of the Eastern Roman Empire. Jesus himself told us, that the beast would come from Turkey. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos, which is in Turkey, write. He who has the sharp sword with two edges, says these things. I know your works, and where you live even where Satan's seat is, where Satan dwells. Jesus is telling us, not only that Satan dwells, in Turkey Pergamos, but that his very seat of power, is in Turkey, not Rome. Turkey was the Eastern Roman Empire. Rome moved its capital to Constantinople. It's from there, which we should expect to see the prince, who comes mediating a peace deal with Israel. Now let's compare the next verse where Satan gives that very same seat, to the beast. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth, as the mouth of a lion. 
and the dragon, gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. Did you catch that? Where did Jesus say the seat of Satan was? Pergamos, Turkey. This is the very same seat of power that Satan gives, to the Antichrist beast. The Antichrist's seat is in Turkey. The Book of Daniel calls him, the Little Horn. Surprisingly, Istanbul which was the very capital, of both the Roman, and Ottoman Empire, is shaped, just like a little horn. And its very name, is the Golden Horn. The Bible describes the beast, having had seven heads, which describe the kings and their kingdoms. These were Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia, Greece, Rome. And the Ottoman Empire, became the seventh head. The angel said, that the seven heads, were seven kings. Because unless, the king of the empire falls, the kingdom remains alive. So when Rome fell, did the Roman Empire, fall? No, it moved its king, and capital to Turkey. And that kingly line, continued right up until, it was defeated, by the Ottoman Empire. Then Rome and its king fell. The Ottoman Empire is the missing seventh head of the beast. And it has come and gone. Without people even realizing it was there. And yet it clearly left its mark on Jerusalem. For the Ottoman Empire, is the same empire, which rebuilt Jerusalem, as it stands today. But how do we know, that the Ottoman Empire was the seventh head? Well from the time of Egypt, right up until 1923, and the end of the Ottoman Empire, there has been an unbroken line of empires or heads, ruling the Middle East. The Beast Empire has been alive from Egypt, to the Ottoman Empire. But where is the Beast now? It's dead. And it's dead, because it was only given seven heads. And the last empire, which was the Ottoman Empire, was given a deadly wound, which killed, the whole beast. And there was no empire to take its place. So it died. And it descended into the bottomless pit. Wikipedia says, the empire fought against the Allies in the First World War. And at the end of the war, it was partitioned by the Allies. The Bible says the head of the beast, was wounded to death by the sword. The sword, which cut into the beast's seventh, and final head, was World War I. And that same sword, of the Allied nations, divided up, or cut up, the Ottoman Empire. Into the Middle East countries we have today. The Bible says, and I saw one of his heads, as it were wounded to death. And his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. But its deadly wound will be healed. When the seventh head of the Ottoman Empire, comes back to life, as an eighth empire. And it will ascend from the bottomless pit, and its wound will be healed, when all the divided Ottoman nations, are, reunited under Turkey. These are the ten horns, the Bible speaks of. Which are on the beast. These will hand over their power to the Turkish beast. Which was ruled by the Caliph, the successor of Muhammad. According to Wikipedia, the name Caliph, is translated from the Arabic word, Khalifa, meaning successor, or substitute. Muslims often say the Caliph is the substitute for Muhammad. But in the Quran, it is used to establish Adam's role, as representative of God, on earth. Did you catch that? The Quran says Khalifa is like God on earth. And the Caliph is both a religious, as well as political leader. And he is a successor to Muhammad, and all the prophets. So not only does Caliph, mean replacement for God on earth. But the Caliph is also the substitute for Muhammad and all the prophets. Muslims claim that Jesus, was just one of their prophets. So the very seed the Caliph holds, is not only is God on earth, but substitute for Jesus, as well. Amazingly the word Antichrist, does not only mean against Christ but substitute for Christ as well. The title of Caliph, matches this description, perfectly. There is a reason why Satan's seat is in Turkey. It's because the Garden of Eden, was located there. Remember Adam and Eve were the rulers of this world, until they forfeited their seat, to Satan. And Satan, will give that very seat of Adam, to the Islamic Antichrist. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God. 
thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom, and perfect, in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden the garden of God. God is telling us not only that Satan is in Eden, but so is the Antichrist. An Eden, is in Turkey. Remember, Jesus said just as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. Guess where the Ark of Noah was located? In Turkey. Turkey is indeed the place to watch. The very color of Turkey's flag, is like a scarlet beast. And as we've discussed, the crescent and star is the very symbol Satan has chosen, to depict himself down through the ages, through false gods. Satan's chosen king, will rise from an alliance of Arab nations which include Turkey, Iraq and Iran. The reason why the beast is described as a mixture of animals, of lion bear and leopard, is firstly because it denotes the three old empires, which unite to form this beast. These were Babylon the lion, Persia the bear and Greece which included Turkey the leopard. But this mixture, also describes the Arabs themselves and their kingdom. Not only did John see the harlot in the desert of Saudi Arabia, but he also saw the beast, which was upholding her. There is a very good reason why the beast, was sitting in the Arabian desert. And why it was described, as a mixed animal. Because God, was describing the people, of the kingdom itself. The Arabs, take their name from Arabia, itself. The name Arabia, in Hebrew is, Ereb. Meaning a mixture, or mixed people, or mixed company. The Arabs are known as the mixed people. Because they are a mixture of all the races in the Middle East. Amazingly, God was describing the Arab race itself, as a mixed beast. Also in the book of Daniel, God describes the kingdom of the Antichrist, as a mixture of iron and clay. And the Hebrew word, used to describe this mixed kingdom, is the very word, Arab. Which is the Hebrew word for mixed. Daniel literally said, the kingdom of the Antichrist would be an Arab kingdom. The Bible describes another figure, called the false prophet. He will likely be seen as a religious leader. He is described as having lambs, horns. The Bible says he will rise from the earth or land. Which is in contrast to the beast, who rises from the sea, of Islamic nations. The opposite of the sea, is the earth. And the earth is actually a reference to the land of Israel. So this second kingdom, will rise from the conquered parts of Israel and Jerusalem. Which is why it's described, as having, two lambs, horns. And it's possible that this false prophet will be Jewish, and may even claim to be Jesus Christ. And he will do false wonders, like bring fire from heaven, which will deceive both Jews, and Muslims. And this false prophet will point to the Islamic Antichrist, declaring him, the true Messiah. And this false prophet, will deceive all into submitting to the Caliph, and his empire. And he will tell those in the Middle East, to set up an image, to honor the revived Islamic empire. And it deceives those dwelling on the earth, because of the miracles which were given to it to do, before the beast. Saying to those dwelling on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, who had the wound by a sword, and lived. The Bible doesn't tell us, what form, this image will take. But it will be built, to honor the revived Islamic empire. And the false prophet, will enable it, to speak. The Bible warns, that if any bow down to this image, of the Islamic empire, they will be cast into hell forever, with the Antichrist. The number 666, can be found in the very seal of the Ottoman caliphs themselves. Their seal is called, the Tugra. It contains both, a Hebrew, and a Greek number 666. The Hebrew 666 consists of the letter, Vau, repeated three times. And right on top of the Hebrew, is found a Greek number 666, which is the letter, Stigma, again repeated three times. Sometimes the caliphs use a pseudonym, next to their name, like Al-Ghazi, meaning the warrior. And you can clearly see a 666 in the pseudonym. Indeed the name of the caliph, written in the Tugra, may very well be, the mark of the beast. For it contains both the name of a man, and his number. And also the mark of his empire, the crescent, and star. The Bible, compares the Antichrist, to a star fallen from heaven. 
like Lucifer, who fell, and like the very Kaaba stone itself, fallen from heaven. Isaiah 14:12 says, How you are fallen from the heavens, Lucifer, O shining star, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. The very image of Lucifer, is the star, fallen from heaven. And the Islamic Antichrist, will use a star symbol, as a representation of himself. Which is why, we find the name of the Caliph, in the sun symbol. Because the 666, was a representation of the sun god. And we know from our studies, that the sun god is really the serpent, Satan. And by putting the Caliph's name in the sun, or star, Satan is declaring the Caliph, to be the 666. So now you know, the Ottoman crest, is totally satanic. For the crescent and star, has been Satan's personal symbol, throughout all of his seven kingdoms. And it's the very star, and crescent symbol, found on the Egyptian golden calf, which was worshipped by the apostate Jews, in the desert. And now this crescent and star symbol, of the serpent Satan, has become the very symbol, of the Islamic Empire. The very seal, of every Turkish president, is the eight-pointed, star, which is the very same star used, by Alexander the Great. It's no wonder God calls the Turkish Antichrist, a star, fallen from heaven. For that is his very seal. The Greek 666, which is chi, psi, stigma, has also been found, in the Bishmila, which is the name of Allah. And it's also been found again in the Shihada, which is the Islamic confession of faith, which is worn as a badge on the foreheads, by Muslims. The Bible tells of the terrible fate, for those who take the Islamic Antichrist's mark. Whoever worships the beast and its image, and receives a mark on his forehead, or his hand, will drink the wine of God's wrath, which has been poured unmixed, into the cup of his anger. He will be tortured, with fire and sulfur, in the presence of the holy angels, and the Lamb. The smoke from their torture, goes up forever and ever. There is no rest day or night, for those who worship the beast, and its image, or for anyone who receives the mark of its name. So to recap, do not bow down to the caliph, nor swear any oaths of allegiance, to him. Do not take the mark of his name, as a stamp on your forehead or hand. Or wear his mark, as a badge on your forehead or right arm. And do not worship the image which he sets up even though it speaks and you may be put to death or imprisoned, because of your refusal to bow to it. Rather believe, in God's only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross, for your sins. Call upon his name, and you shall be saved. Only Jesus, has the power to save. His name, is the only one, in all the world that can save anyone. And salvation, is found in no other. So cry out to God today. Ask Him to forgive you, of all your sins. And believe in what He did for you on the cross, and you shall be, saved. John 3:16. For God so loved the world, that He gave, His only begotten Son, that whosoever, believes in Him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Please pray this prayer, today. Father God, I believe that You sent Your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross, for my sins. I believe that he died, and was resurrected, and is coming back to judge the living and the dead. Father, I repent. Please forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart, and make me, your child. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have said this prayer, and decided to turn from your life of sin, and follow Jesus Christ, then you have become a child, of God. Please go and find a born-again, Christian church, where you can have fellowship with other believers. Thank you for listening. Please see our other broadcasts, on the end days. This program has no copyright, and may be distributed freely.